Good afternoon. On behalf of the Waynesboro Symphony, Happy New Year, and welcome to our first chamber music concert of 2021. I'm Peter Wilson, music director of the WSO, and I'm so pleased you joined us today for a concert featuring music either composed by Americans or inspired by the American experience. As we are still in a pandemic, we are making every effort to bring music to you, the members of our community, while maintaining proper safety protocols so as to protect our musicians and our audience. As more Americans receive the vaccine, we are hopeful that we will be able to return as a full symphony orchestra in person and perform for live audiences very soon. Until then, we hope you enjoy the concerts of smaller ensembles we will be presenting for the remainder of this season. And now, we are proud to present musicians from the Waynesboro Symphony performing chamber music in a program entitled The American Spirit. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Waynesboro Symphony Orchestra's chamber music concert for January. I'm Charles Salambier, a member of the board, and I'm so pleased you've chosen to spend your afternoon with us. Uh, I know you all understand that due to circumstances, we really can't have a full audience and the full symphony, but please know that we are already scheduling and planning for the first concert that we can have when this pandemic comes under control. Again, the concert is titled The American Spirit. If you would like to see the program with uh, director Peter Wilson's program notes, you'll find it on the Waynesboro Symphony's website, which is wsomusic.org. Now, before I turn the program over to real musicians, I do want to thank Atlantic Union Bank for sponsoring this concert. Uh, I bank with Atlantic Union. They're a good bank, but uh, their actions make it clear that they care every much, uh, every bit as much for their community as they do for the, uh, the running of their bank. Thank you again for joining us. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Beth Cantrell, our principal cellist, who introduced this first piece. The first piece on our pro program, Appalachia Waltz, is by Mark O'Connor. He was born in 1961, so a living composer. He's quite prolific as a composer, and his uh, style in composition strives to unite various genres, including bluegrass, some jazz, and then classical music. Um, O'Connor first came to um, fame as an early teenager because he was a prize-winning fiddler, and he did a lot of touring and concertizing and in, spent some time touring with a jazz violinist. Some of you might know Stefan Grappelli's work. The, this uh, waltz is a title track of an album recorded in 1995 by Mark O'Connor, Edgar Meyer on bass, and Yo-Yo Ma on cello. And it's a waltz in the sense, I think, more of swirling dancers and weaving lines rather than tapping one's toes.
The duo for flute and piano by Aaron Copeland was commissioned by 70 pupils and friends of William Kincaid, the first flutist of the Philadelphia Orchestra from 1921 to 1960. The piece is dedicated in his memory. It is composed of three movements. The first opens with a solo passage for the flute, reminiscent of the first movement of Copeland's Third Symphony. Copeland described the second movement as sad and wistful and used harmonic and melodic language more akin to his later works. The third movement is faster and lively. The world premiere of this piece took place in 1971.
The string quartet in F major by Dvorak has the name the American Quartet. Um, it was written uh, after Dvorak's initial success in Europe. He was invited in 1892 to come to New York City for a very big plum job with a huge paycheck, and that was to head the National Conservatory of Music in New York City. This particular institution was very progressive for its time in that it allowed women and black students to enroll. As he had in his native Bohemia, Dvorak incorporated elements of music that he heard around him and encouraged his students at the conservatory to develop a distinctly American style incorporating songs of the people. Dvorak spent the summer of 1893 to get away from the city in Spillville, Iowa, a farming town in the northeast part of the state populated by emigrants from his native Bohemia. Home away from home. The quartet we are about to hear was composed during that summer. Its American flavor, songs of blacks and of Native Americans in particular, can be heard by, in the opening theme that's played by the viola. It uses a pentatonic scale, which is a scale with five notes per octave. It sounds similar to the way that the black keys of the piano sound when you play those by themselves.
Thank you. 
I just love listening to the symphony orchestra. It doesn't matter if it's the full symphony or, or a chamber group, and, and I'm just incredibly lucky to be associated with such wonderful people and such incredibly talented musicians. Your symphony enters a national competition each year called the American Prize, which judges a broad range of performance disciplines. Based upon our results the last several years, we find that we're one of the finest symphony orchestras of the community nature in the country. Now this year, your symphonies received a very special honor with the American Prize naming us an honored artist of the American Prize. Only 26 such awards have been made in the history of this honor, with most going to individuals, soloists, composers, and conductors. This is the first such honor ever awarded to a symphony orchestra. And you, our audience, are partly responsible for this success, for it goes without saying that your symphony would not exist without your support. Your continued generosity is vital to our continued success. Should you wish to respond to this particular concert, you will find the Donate tab on the home page of the symphony's website, which again, wsomusic.org. Our next concert is scheduled for the end of February, so watch your emails and watch our website for details. Again, my sincere thanks for joining us this afternoon. Ian Clark is a leading contemporary flute teacher, player, and composer. His many compositions for flute are wide-ranging in style. Hypnosis is a dreamy and lyrical piece, and it evolved from structured improvisations when Clark played in a rock group in the 1980s. Clark developed it into a piece for flute and piano in 1994.
Like the American string quartet, Dvorak composed a symphony from the New World during his time in New York. It was composed in 1893 and was a critically acclaimed piece right away. Going Home is a setting of the music from the Largo of this symphony. The words Going Home are not Dvorak's, although it's easy to hear how melancholy the melody is. Dvorak did, in fact, leave New York in 1895 due to homesickness and financial problems at the conservatory. The text for Going Home was written in 1922 by William Arms Fisher, who had been a student under Dvorak at the National Conservatory. Fisher taught there for many years. The song, Going Home, has been mistakenly called a spiritual. It isn't, but it's similar in style. Again, evidence of Dvorak using the music he heard around him.
I'm Nick Harvey, and I serve as principal trumpet of the Waynesboro Symphony. Eric Ewazen was born in 1954 in Cleveland, Ohio. During his studies at Eastman School of Music, Tanglewood, and the Juilliard School, his teachers included Milton Babbitt, Samuel Adler, Warren Benson, Joseph Schwantner, and Gunter Schuller. He holds a DMA from Juilliard. Having received many composition awards and prizes, his works for soloists, chamber ensembles, and orchestras have been performed in the US and overseas. Iwazen's trio for trumpet, violin, and piano was commissioned by Chris Gecker, who first performed it at the Juilliard School in 1994. The work consists of four movements, the first and fourth movements bookending the middle two. Shortly after its commissioning, one reviewer in the New York Times wrote, quote, the trumpet is a dangerous creature to bring into the china shop of chamber music, but Mr. Iwazen cannily exploits the instrument's lyric side, end quote. Thank you for joining us for today's performance, and now enjoy Eric Ewazen's trio for trumpet, violin, and piano.
Hello again. We hope you have enjoyed this afternoon's program, The American Spirit. We have a special encore to present, but before we do that, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the musicians who have taken such great care and effort in putting this concert together, as well as the members of our staff who made everything possible. Our encore is Jay Ungar's Ashokan Farewell. It was composed by Ungar for the students of the folk music camp he and his wife have hosted for many years. The fiddle tune gained enormous popularity after it was featured in the Ken Burns series on PBS entitled The Civil War. So much so, Ungar felt compelled to allow his tune to be arranged for various ensembles. Today you'll hear the string orchestra version with the solo fiddle part performed by our WSO Associate Concertmaster, Jake Rogie. Thank you again for joining us, and we hope to see you at our next live streaming event. Be sure to visit our website, wsomusic.org, for further details. Please stay safe, be kind to one another, and enjoy the Ashokan Farewell by members of the Waynesboro Symphony.